Hi there. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been diving deep into sleeve fitting. In the first video of the series, we talked about the armhole shape and size and determined how to assess if it will be a good foundation for your sleeve. In the second video of the series, we talked about the sleeve itself and determined how to assess if it will fit into the armhole of the bodice correctly. Now this week, I want to demonstrate how to assess and troubleshoot the fit of the sleeve in a sample. I'm Alexandra Morgan from In-House Pattern Studio and I want to send out a really big thank you to Jill who has allowed me to use her photos to demonstrate assessing and correcting some of the most common fitting issues with sleeves. Jill, thank you. I'm sure your example will help someone else and if you're so inclined, I invite you to try the suggestions I have and I hope that you'll keep us informed of your results. Now let's take a look at Jill's sleeve. So here we are with Jill's sleeve that she's having some difficulty fitting. So as you can tell, I have actually put on some guidelines onto her photographs here, just simply to show you how to go about assessing the fit of the sleeve. So you know from the video series uh, that we definitely want to assess the bodice of the garment first. So you want to make sure that the armhole shape and size is going to be correct so that the sleeve that you're setting onto it is going to sit nicely. So when I take a look at uh, Jill's photos here, one of the first things I notice, of course, is the drag lines on the sleeve. So you can see quite clearly here on her side views that there's some issues here that she's having. And from what I understand, she's been struggling with this for quite some time. And um, I wanted to just give her some guidance as to like, how to go about fitting this. And I thought it would just be such a great example to show you when we take a look at how to assess the sleeve fitting. So the first thing that I want to talk about in terms of the body changes that I would suggest are a few things. The first one is the position of her shoulder seam. Now it seems to me that the shoulder seam is sitting a little bit further back than may, might be optimum for her shoulder line. Now of course photographs can definitely be deceiving so by all means Jill if you'll just assess this in the mirror for yourself as well. I want you to sort of take this seam line that you have currently and possibly move it forward. Now I'm not saying for you to move it forward by very much. I'm talking maybe three eighths to a half inch or so. Um, what I want you to be sure of is that you don't actually see the seam directly on the front of your garment. You do want it to be sitting on the top of your shoulder. So if moving it by half inch over is too much, then pull it back a little bit. Maybe you only need a quarter. So I would do that first on the bodice. And I'm gonna be showing you the pattern adjustments for this in a minute, but I just wanted to go over the assessment first. Now, when I decided that the shoulder seam should be moved forward, what I've done is I've basically gone from her ear lobe down the neck following her earlobe direction and across the top of the shoulder. And I'm also joining that to what I think is the center of her arm. So this is how I'm sort of assessing if that seam needs to be forward or not. And again, the amount that you decide to move it forward is going to really depend on your eye view, because as you know, photographs can definitely be deceiving based on the angle that they're taken at. Now the other thing that I want to suggest about the bodice is that I feel like perhaps the across front might be just a little bit too wide. And now the reason that I am seeing that is I can kind of see that there's some excess fabric here and here. Now again, I want you to be very uh, conservative here. I don't want you to remove too much because your fit in the front is actually pretty good. So it's something that I want you to just do slightly. And the reason I want you to do that is I can just see that there's just a little fold here on each side that might be helpful if you just scoop out the front just a little bit. And the other thing that I have for you on the back bodice is it looks to me like your back armhole is perhaps a little bit long. Now there are two ways to approach this. You can either adjust the center back length 
you can definitely do that. But I feel like just reducing the armhole length in the back is really going to get rid of sort of this bubble that you're seeing here at the back of your arm. And you can kind of see how the back armhole is a bit wavy. It's showing me that there's a little bit extra length there. I don't really want you to add any to the center back length simply because I can see that I don't want to add any fabric to pull at the length of your back. So I would rather remove some of the length here on a knit t-shirt than add at the back. The ultimate result is going to be very similar whether you choose one or the other and you'll see why in a minute. So those are the suggestions I have for your bodice front and back and the shoulder position. And we're gonna go over the pattern adjustments for that in just a second. But the next thing I wanna to talk to you is about the sleeve, because really this is what you've been concentrating on are these drag lines that you're seeing on the sleeve. Now, part of that is due to this forward thrust of your shoulder or the ball joint of your shoulder. And this is just something that your sleeve is not accommodating for. So it looks to me like you need to shift your sleeve head forward, meaning that that whole ball joint of the sleeve is going to match your body by shifting it forward a little bit. This is going to help relieve these stress lines here because what's happening is, is that your shoulder is borrowing fabric from the back of the sleeve. And you can see that quite clearly here on this view as well. The other thing I want you to talk about or consider doing is adjusting your sleeve head shape. And this is going to come automatically with this shifting the sleeve head forward. And again, you'll see that in a minute. Um, but it looks to me like you have some excess fabric here at the front armhole curve and a little bit of excess fabric here as well. So at this back shaping of the sleeve head shape. So this is what I mean about adjusting for your sleeve head shape. Now, after you do these adjustments, you must walk your sleeve into the armhole because the position of your notches may change, okay? So I want you to make sure that you do that. Now, what would have made it a little bit easier for you to assess the fitting issues in the sleeve is if you had the center sleeve and the bicep line on your sleeve, as well, of course, your balance lines on your garment. Now, I can see here this is a finished garment, so I completely understand why they're not here. Um, but for, if you're going to assess these adjustments, I'd really recommend that you draw those lines in on your next sample just to see if it makes any difference at all. Okay, so those are the suggestions I have and the assessment I have of your t-shirt here. Let's move to the pattern adjustments that I would recommend for that. So we're just going to scroll up. Hopefully you don't get dizzy. And I've just repeated the adjustments that um, I've suggested here. So the first thing I would thought that you could do is move this shoulder seam toward the front. As I said, you want to be conservative somewhere between a quarter and a half inch at the max. And how I would suggest you do that is just make a slash and shift that uh, back up and forward and make a slash on your front and shift that front forward as well. So in other words, you're going to be opening at the back and overlapping at the front. And I will actually give you a link to a video tutorial that I did that's similar to this. I may even have this particular one in that. I will definitely link to that below. Now the next thing after you do that, so this is just going to change your shoulder position. This doesn't change your neckline position at all because I happen to like the way your neckline is sitting around your neckline. I think the back neck drop position is good and I think the front neck drop position is good. And I also like your neck width. So this is the way that I would just adjust the shoulder seam position. Now the next thing I want was thinking that you could do is reduce your back armhole length slightly. And I forgot to mention this in the previous, so I'm just gonna scroll back. So removing your back armhole length, as I said, was um, to eliminate this sort of bubble that you're seeing at the back armhole here. But what it's also going to do is lift up some of this excess fabric that you're sh seeing here under the arm. So that's how I would sort of solve it. So we're going to just scroll back again so that you can see how I would do it. So here, I would actually just make a slash line through the center line of your shoulder and then at about the across 
back level. It doesn't matter really exactly where, but you're going to create a pivot point right here at those intersection of those two lines. And what I want you to do is overlap these two pieces by a small amount. I think all you're going to need is about a quarter of an inch here. You don't need to reduce it by that much simply because it's okay to have a little bit of ease in the back armhole. What this is going to do is increase the length of your shoulder seam to the back which you can easily ease into your front front shoulder line. So basically your back shoulder line will be longer but you will ease it into the shorter front seam line length. Okay. The other thing to deal with that excess width that you have across your front, just simply scoop out your front armhole just a little bit. Again, it doesn't look to me like you have very much there, so I would just start with maybe a quarter of an inch at the most just to reduce that. You might find that will, that'll make quite a big difference. Okay, so that's going to deal with the armhole shape and the size on your bodice. So the next thing to talk about is the sleeve. And what I was suggesting that you do is you shift your sleeve head forward. And I'm going to actually zoom in on this for you because it is a little bit small. Okay, so here we have the the sleeve head and what I've done is I've created a slash line right across the top of the sleeve cap above your notches and all I've done is shifted this top half of the sleeve forward. Now the amount that I've shifted it is going to be equal to the amount that you moved your shoulder seam forward. That's what I'd like you to start with. Now you may find that you need more than this later but I want you to start there because this is actually going to align this shoulder notch with the seam line of your bodice. Okay, So shift this over by however much you move your shoulder seam forward. So if you moved your shoulder seam forward by a quarter of an inch you're going to shift this over by a quarter of an inch. And What you're going to have to do after that is realign or reshape your sleeve head curves here. And what I would suggest that you do is you're going to be shaving off from the back and shaving a little bit off of the front armhole curve here. And that should give you a little bit more forward pitch of your sleeve. And you can see actually I've just put the difference here so it will be a little bit clearer. Below here is the original sleeve and this line right here indicates the new sleeve head shape. So you can see how you've actually shifted that sleeve head more forward to the front to accommodate that forward th thrust shoulder that you have. Okay, so those are the suggestion that I have for you for this particular type of sleeve assessment and the pattern adjustments that will go with it. Now I know for a fact that your photographs are going to be really really helpful with, for everyone else that's watching this video because these are very very common fitting issues and stuff that I see all the time. So I really really do hope that this video helps you and I really hope it helps many others as well. So the other thing that I want to um, suggest here is that I know that the previous two videos that we talked about we're talking about woven sleeves and this particular example is a knit sleeve but I was okay with representing this as a really good example simply because these drag lines and these fitting issues also show up in woven sleeves as well. So I don't want you to be concerned about the difference between a woven sleeve and a knit sleeve. The difference between the two sleeves is really the amount of ease that you have in the sleeve. So for instance, in a knit sleeve, you might only need one inch of bicep girth and you might need far less, almost usually about one centimeter of ease in the sleeve head for a knit sleeve. So you just need less ease in the sleeve of a knit garment simply because the garment stretches or the, the fabric stretches. Okay, so I hope you found that helpful and if you have any questions by all means just drop them in the comments below. I'll be happy to discuss it with you. Once again, thank you Jill for submitting your photos. I hope that you'll send me an update of your progress. For everyone else, thanks for watching. I hope you found the information helpful in some way.
Now I'll be taking a little break from the video post for a few weeks as the year winds down and we all start enjoying time with our family and friends during the holiday season. Now if you find you have some downtime before the new year, I invite you to jump onto inhousepatternstudio.com to review one or two of the many video tutorials that I have waiting for you there. I truly hope that you have enjoyed the videos and classes and conversations that we've had over the last year. And I look forward to serving you in even bigger and better ways in the new year. Take care. I'll chat with you soon. Bye for now.